Hola, heart community. My name's Evelyn Worthington, and I'm back. I'm so excited you're here today. Don't forget there's a live chat. Hop in there, say hello. If you're watching later, comment down below. So take out your phone. Don't worry, this isn't mine. I don't get one until I'm 15. Make sure to text your friends and invite them too. Everyone loves the invitation, especially me. All right, friends, that's enough out of me. Now let's get it back to the main experience. See you soon. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hearts Online Experience. I'm so excited you made it here today. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Birdie, and I am so glad that you are with us. So I wanted to take a moment and give you a couple songs that you can check out this week. Normally on a Sunday when we're all together at church, we're listening to some songs and enjoying them all together. But since we're not together right now in person, I wanted to give you a couple of those songs to check out on your own. So. If you check out the links below in the description of this YouTube video, you can check out all of the songs that we have recommended for you on YouTube. So check them out this week and let us know what you think. But there is one specific song I wanted to tell you about. This is one of my absolute favorite songs. Um, it's called Peace and it's by Hillsong Young and Free. Now the one that I linked for you today, the video I linked, um, is a cover of it by Amanda Cook who is amazing. Um, this song is so special to me. It is about having anxiety, it's about um, the world being in chaos, about things being hectic all around us, but God has promised us peace. It's a promise that he keeps in our life and he's never gonna stop keeping that promise for us. So check out the song this week, really listen to the words and write some down that are special to you. Uh, let us know what you think. I hope that you love them. Uh, I hope to see you guys soon and I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Bye. <laughs> I wasn't expecting an interruption in my life. It changed everything. I felt a little like lost because I had this plan and when it didn't happen, I was like, what do I do now? The emotions that I felt during that time were fear. Stress, anxiety, hopelessness. I was excited, but also anxious. The hardest part of that experience was not knowing the end result. A sense of loss. Feeling completely alone, like no one else was going through this. Feeling like I had to start over. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being with us today here at the heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader here at this church, this community, this group of people who have agreed to live in a way where we are in each other's messes. We believe that when we live life together, that's how we're able to, to take these steps forward in our faith, in our life, and be in this. 
We are in a series right now called Interrupted, and what we've, uh, what we've done is we've asked, asked a few of you to share your story, an interruption in your life, a time when you've been interrupted, when you were on a path, something stopped it, and what that did to affect your life, what was difficult about it, what you learned about it. And so there's someone we asked to share their story. Her name is Lynn, and I'm excited for you to hear what she had to share, so let's take a look together. My life has been one long series of interruptions. And um, I have a friend who says, pivot or perish. And I think that's true. I want to talk to you about two interruptions in my life that had a profound effect on me. And the first one had to do with having kids. Um, I believed that I was born to be a parent, that I was going to have enough children to have my own football team. Um, I thought that I would be a good parent. I had a vision of a white picket fence and 19 bedrooms and children coming and going. And that was not to be for me. Um, I tried for a number of years to have kids. I um, lost babies, I had tubal pregnancies, I had fertility issues, and when I was 35, I, I was told that I just, it wasn't going to happen. That was a really, really hard pill for me to swallow. I was angry, and I was bitter, and I was disappointed. I had to kind of take a step back and figure out, uh, okay, then what what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? When I was 48 years old, I had a chance encounter with a detective who was working on uh, crimes against children. And she told me that she had a child victim who was seven months pregnant and going to give the child up for adoption. Did I want him? And I said, yes, without hesitation. I um, met the biological grandmother and biological mother, and they are um, both African American. They decided that they would allow me to adopt this child that was to be born in September. I went through the last two months of the pregnancy with them. I was in the delivery room and my son Gabriel was born on September 3rd, 2008. That was a, a huge interruption. But I was arrogant enough to think that I could do this. You know, I was 48, a career woman, financially stable. I can deal with being a single parent no matter what anybody says. And the fact that he is of a different race is not a big deal. Um, that was yet another opportunity that God gave me to manage my expectations. I realized that everything happened in God's time and it was the right time for it to happen. That Gabriel was the child that I was supposed to have and I'm the mom that he was supposed to have. I realize that unanswered prayers are sometimes the very best thing for us. It is so freeing to realize that God's just up there saying, I got you, I got you. So for me, I have grown, and I'm not there yet, but I have grown in my ability to recognize those situations where I have to say, okay, God, it's you. Um, I'm here. It, it's you. You take over and you take me where you need me to be. I hope you uh, really enjoyed our uh, story uh, of interruption that came from a good friend of mine, Lynn Peach. Um, she was uh, willing to share with you an interruption in her life. And I hope these stories of interruptions have really helped you to see that, uh, that an interruption can be an opportunity. 
And interruption can be something that we don't have to be afraid of, that we don't have to uh, be scared of. That something it's something that we can that we can see, recognize, and step into uh, an interruption as an opportunity. Hopefully throughout this series, you've been able to see that uh, these interruptions in your life, if you look back at your life and as you prepare for your future and you're living your life today, right now, that interruptions don't need to be something that keep you from who you want to be, that sometimes interruptions help set you on the path of where you want to be and where you need to be. If you don't know me already, my name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader here at the heart, and uh, we uh, we are in a series called Interrupted. And uh, before we get into the series, just a few quick things I wanted to tell you. Um, one, we uh, still have uh, something going on right now that we're trying new this summer during this time called Community Night. It's every Monday night at 7 p.m. We're doing a Zoom link um, as we're you know staying safe and and, uh, uh, and staying separated. So we're using Zoom to stay connected because even though we want to stay safe and be separated uh, for the importance of safety, we still want to be connected. Being connected is as important as ever. And so being able to stay connected through Community Night is a great way to do that. Jump online. You can get all the information uh, on our website or on social media if you follow us on Facebook uh, and Instagram and to be able to, to, to be a part of that. It's a great place to, it's different than Connect Group where it's not just a list of questions that we're answering together. It's more of a conversation, kind of see how you're doing, checking in, getting to know the people around us. And it, it, when you join, you might get to know something about somebody that you haven't, haven't met before and you might get to get, uh, get to know something new about somebody you already know in your life. So check it out this Monday uh, at 7 p.m. on uh, on Zoom and uh, you can get the link and all that information uh, uh, on our website or on Facebook and uh, and Instagram. Now, um, this this series interrupted. We had planned for it to be five weeks and if you've been keeping up, if you've been following along today, today is week five. But we are going to interrupt our next series that we're doing with an extra message with Interrupted, a special message that's going to be coming to you next week, and you're going to want to tune in uh, for it. So, uh, so today will be week five, but we're not wrapping up today. We feel like there was a lot of juice in this series, a lot of juice in this idea of being interrupted. So we're going to bring one more message to you, one more message coming uh, this next Sunday. But today what I want to do is I want to talk about what it means for you and I to be interruptible. What it means to be interruptible in our life, where we work, in our parenting, in our marriage, in our relationships, uh, whatever it is, being able to have this attitude of being interruptible. As I was you know, thinking about this for this week and the kind of this idea that's been on my mind for, for a while now, I, started to, I, I wanted to think about, okay, what are some times in my life that I have been interruptible? And I don't mean that interruption has happened and then I saw the opportunity later. I, I don't mean that something, something bothered me or something interrupted my life, something stopped me from going where I was going and doing what I wanted to do. I'm talking about where I intentionally set myself up to be interruptible. Okay, and I want you to be thinking about this for yourself. When have you set yourself up to be interruptible? Intentionally saying, I am ready to be stopped. It's not, it's not natural for us to do that. Especially with the way we are in our society. We are moving forward. We are taking care of things. We are getting business done. We're on the next productivity. We're on the next task. We're on the next project. We are on our way somewhere. We are on our way to do something. And so uh, it reminded me from, this is years and years ago, maybe Corbin was like eight or nine years old, so maybe like seven, eight, nine, ten years ago-ish, I can't quite remember. But like most people, uh, uh, Amber and I, if we didn't understand something, we would just Google it, right? If you don't know what to do, you Google it. You want to learn how to cook a recipe, Google it. You want to know how to you know, do, do it yourself, build a table, Google it. You want to know how to do something in your backyard, Google it. Whatever it is, right? That's, that's just how we do things. And it's beautiful because you can find a YouTube video, you can find an article, you can find somebody who's done it and made the mistakes that you want to avoid. And so it's a perfect system. And so one of the things that we, that we did was... Uh, we, uh, each, each year, it seemed like we had to Google something about what it meant to be a parent to an eight-year-old, what it meant to be a parent to a nine-year-old. And, you know, I'm sure if you have kids, uh, nieces and nephews, you know, you kind of get this is like, as soon as you understand what it means to, to parent a nine-year-old and you get it and you're a pro, they turn 10, 
right? And as soon as you get, you know, you're a pro and you're raising a 10 year old and you got that figured out, they turn 11 and it comes with new changes and evolutions and in, in the way your child thinks and the way they process and the way they handle emotion or don't handle emotion or whatever, whatever it is. So we were reading through, we, we would look up stuff on, you know, uh, how to raise, you know, when to talk to kids about sex. That's a good thing to Google. When do I talk to my kids about sex? I can't tell you, but Google can. Um, and uh, so, you know, we would read things like that. It's a funny quick story. So when um, Corbin was younger, we were going to have the talk about, about sex. I don't, this, I'm interrupting this message to tell you this. <laughs> um, and so we said, okay, uh, let's make sure, you know, some of the experts, children's experts, whatever, let's look up when is a good age to talk to your kid about sex. And Corbin was 10 at the time. And so we looked it up and it said, a good time to talk to your kids about sex or to start having that conversation is between the ages of 9 and 11. And so we told Corbin, uh, I think it's time to talk about sex. And he goes, he goes, I think I'm too young for this. <laughs> That's a true story. Uh, that is a true fact. Um, so anyway, we were reading through articles on, you know, parenting your young kids, and we, we, we came upon this article that said, kids are rarely in the mood to talk when you want them to talk. And when they're in the mood to talk, as parents, you need to be able to stop and listen. And that was, that was, that was life changing for Amber and I, that was, that really changed the way that we think, because if you think about it, it's, it's, so some of you parents that, you know, uh, uh, or, or grandparents or whatever, there are some times when you like, you pick your kid up from school or you see them when you get home and you say, you inevitably say something like, how was your day or how did it go at school or whatever. And that is when you want them to engage in that conversation and tell you about what happened and all the funny stories and something that they learned. And if you ever known any kid and you say, how was school today? It's usually one word. You know what it is? Say it on three. One, two, three. Good. It was good. It's fine. It's fun. Whatever it is. And then there's something that happens inevitably throughout the rest of the day where somebody, what we started to notice is that Corbin would later on say, did I tell you guys about history and then tell us a story? Or did I, you know, um, something happened funny today at school and it is not in the time frame that we asked him how his day went. It, it, day went, it was later on when he was just talking. And I remember starting to get into the habit years ago of, okay, Corbin is starting to tell us about his day. Let's stop what we're doing and listen. And that seems so like, oh yeah, obviously, why wouldn't you listen when somebody wants to talk? But that's just not the way we think. Because it would be when we're in the middle of watching a movie or when Amber and I are talking about something or when we're about to go to bed or something where it would interrupt what we were currently doing. And so maybe you don't have kids and maybe you can't necessarily relate to that, but I want you to be thinking about times where when have you allowed yourself to be interruptible? Do you allow yourself to be interruptible at work? Or are you the kind of person that is single focused? I'm in front of my computer. Don't bother me. Door closed in my office. Door closed in the room where I'm working. Don't interrupt me. Are you interruptible in your relationships? You know, do you have a plan for where your friendship wants to go? Do you have a plan for what we're going to do, you know, with our friends this weekend? Or this is what we're going to do on the Zoom call. Or here's where we're going to go to dinner. And you don't like interruptions. You don't like people changing your plans. Maybe you're really comfortable with be, with your plans being changed. Maybe you're really comfortable with your with interruptions in your life. But are you comfortable with interruptions or you are are you intentionally interruptible? Are you willing to be intentionally interruptible? And so today what I want to do is I want to I want to read a story and it's a it's a little bit lengthy piece of scripture, okay? It's a little bit lengthy piece of the book of Luke. And actually it's a callback to a few weeks ago where we saw Jesus being interrupted on where he was going. Jesus being interrupted, he's on his way somewhere, okay? And people interrupt Jesus with requests. They interrupt Jesus with prayer. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I challenged you, are you willing to interrupt God, right? Are you willing to interrupt God with prayer? Are you willing to interrupt the people in your life with love, connection, with, 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 reaching, with reaching out? So today, I want to read a story of Jesus being interrupted. It's going to sound familiar because we looked at it a couple of weeks ago. But then I'm going to continue reading and watch what happens even during this interruption. 
Okay, so before we get into the, the scripture, and if you want, you can pull up your version event. version is a, a Bible app that, uh, that is put out by a church called Life Church, and they've done an amazing job of creating this Bible app where you can uh, read through different plans, um, and then each week we have an event that you can follow along with that has the scriptures we're going to look at, it has you know important links for like community night and all that kind of stuff, connect groups, signing up to serve, uh, just, just connecting with, letting us know you're there and we can reach out to you and connect with you. You and um, you know, following along with the message, you can go find that in the U version uh, event. It's U version. Tap on more, and then tap on events, and you'll see the heart there based on your location. Or you can get your Bible out, good old fashioned Bible, and some of your analog, keeping it real. Do it. Okay, now. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to read starting from verse 40. And I read verse 40 a couple weeks ago, okay? So I kind of just want you to be in this story with me. Just be in this story with me, and then we'll come back and chat about it and see kind of what we can see from here. Now, real quickly, if you're not familiar with the Bible, I just want to say real quick, Luke is one of the four Gospels that refer to as the Gospels. It's the story of Jesus on earth, okay? Well, some of the things Jesus said, some of the things Jesus did, some of the people that Jesus talked to, uh, the interactions he had with people who followed him, the interactions he had with people who really disliked him, who thought he was an interruption to the Jewish faith, who thought he was an interruption to the way that God wanted things to go on earth. So... Uh, this part right here, it's kind of like a, a collection of stories of things that Jesus did. And we're kind of in the middle of that, of things that Jesus was doing. Okay, so uh, we're going to pick up in chapter 8, verse 40. Now, as we're reading this, and for the rest of the time we have together, a few short minutes, remember to be thinking about for yourself, thinking about for yourself, where can I be interruptible? Am I interruptible? Am I allowing myself to be interruptible? Okay? All right. So here we go. Now, this is going to sound a little bit familiar because it's a couple of weeks ago if you were here. Uh, but remember, like I said, just be with me in this story. Okay? Hang with me in this. When Jesus returned to Galilee, the crowds were overjoyed for they had been waiting for him to arrive. Just then, a man named Jairus, the leader of the local Jewish congregation, fell before Jesus' feet. He desperately begged him to come and heal his 12-year-old daughter, his only child, because she was at the point of death. So Jesus is coming into town, immediately gets interrupted by this man named Jairus. Okay? He comes into town, gets interrupted, and he begs Jesus. Are you, that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago. Are you willing to get right in front of Jesus and say, this is what I need? Are you willing to interrupt God? You know, a lot of times we think of my favorite way to think of God. It was like he was like the CEO on the top floor of this building. And I would never dream of bothering. You know, God has got so many things he's doing and he's signing contracts. and He's firing people and hiring people and, you know, making acquisitions and mergers and whatever CEOs do in the top level of the uh, of the uh, of the tower. Right. But are you willing to. Take the elevator up to that top floor to barge into the office of God and say, I need your help. It's a saucy thought. You, mean, you can wrap your, you know, you write that down and you journal on it later. Uh, but what, what a bold faith that would take to barge into God's office and say, hey, I need you. I need you today. I need you in this. That's saucy. Okay, so you can do that. You can do that later. Okay, so watch this. Jesus started to go with him. Uh, to his home to see her, Jairus' daughter, but a large crowd surrounded him. What does this sound like? Another interruption. Watch this. In the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered greatly for 12 years from slow bleeding. Even though she had spent all that time on healers, uh, all that she had on healers, she was still suffering. Pressing into the crowd, she came up behind Jesus and touched the tassel of his prayer shawl. Instantly, her bleeding stopped and she was healed. Verse 45, Jesus suddenly stopped and said to his disciples, someone touched me. Who is it? Now, this is a silly question for them because they all denied it. Peter pointed out, Master, everyone is touching you, trying to get close to you. The crowds are so thick, we can't walk through all these people without being jostled. And Jesus replied, yes, but I felt power surge through me. Someone touched me to be healed and they received healing. When the woman realized she couldn't hide any longer, she came and fell trembling at Jesus' feet. Before the crowd, she declared, I was desperate to touch you, Jesus, for I knew even if I could just touch the fringe of your robe, I would be healed. Jesus responded, Beloved daughter, your faith in me has released your healing. You may go with my peace. Talk about an interruption. 
I mean, it, it, it's almost like the stories of the Bible, the stories of Jesus are basically him walking from interruption to interruption. In fact, write this down. I did write this down for you. Uh, so maybe put this down so you can think on it later. Jesus' life on earth was a series of interruptions that made the way and created his connection with God and others. Jesus was perfectly interruptible. And Jesus allowing himself to be interruptible made a way first for Jairus to make a request for his daughter. And then Jesus still allowing himself to be interruptible on his way to an interruption made way for this woman to come up and touch him. And this is such a, this is, okay, this part's for free. I, you know, this, write this down. How fun is this? Watch this. Jesus says, your faith in me has released your healing. It's almost like Jesus didn't touch her to heal her. He didn't say be healed. Her faith in Jesus was so strong that that faith in Jesus released the healing in her that she needed. Come on, that is a saucy thought. That is juicy. Write that down and say, is your faith releasing healing? Write that down for you, okay? Is your faith strong enough that it releases the healing that God has already put in you? God is in us. God is a part of us. And when we release our faith, when we activate our faith, maybe we can be like this woman, and our faith activates the healing that we need. Our faith activates the joy that we need. Our faith activates what we need from God because God is already in us. God is around us. God is here. So that's, that. I mean, that's that's a whole other message. We might do a whole message series. Look forward to that in the future called, uh, we're going we're gonna to call uh, the uh, uh, message series, Your Faith in Me. Oh, that's juicy. Come on, look for that in a couple months. So anyway, so what we see here is an interruption. We see Jesus allowing himself to be interruptible, allowing himself to be interrupted by this woman when he was already on the way to an interruption. Now, what does that mean for Jesus? That means that Jesus is intentionally putting himself in a place where he is being slow. You ever hear a story about Jesus running anywhere? He was walking, being slow, letting people talk to him, letting people ask him questions, letting people uh, receive healing, letting people uh, ask for ask for healing for their for their children or for their loved ones. He allows himself to be interruptible. Now maybe you and I are not Jesus. Maybe you and I are not the pinnacle of our faith, but what we can do is we can take a cue from Jesus and allow ourselves to be interruptible to make way for people, connection, faith, and growth in our life. Okay, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. If you're not taking notes yet, take, take something out and take notes. Okay, the first thing is this. Or I guess the second thing, because I already had you write down the other one. What if, okay, maybe the interruption in your life is the path that you're supposed to take. Maybe the interruption in your life is the path that you're supposed to take. We're so focused on, here's a plan, here's a direction, here's where I wanna go, here's what I'm gonna do, and if I get interrupted, it's gonna stop my plan, it's gonna stop me from moving forward. Now, we started off this whole series saying that an interruption is an opportunity. An interruption can be an opportunity for you to see. For an interruption is an opportunity for you to step into and see what could be. What if, what if maybe be the interruption is the path that you need to take, but you'll never know if you're not interruptible. You will never know if the interruption is the path to take if you're constantly staying away from interruptions, if you're keeping yourself away from interruptions. But what if you allowed yourself to be interruptible and to see if that interruption is the path that you're supposed to take. Now, I have to say this, as we talk about interruptions and we talk about the opportunities that exist in these interruptions, that doesn't mean that you let everything happen. Okay, when I say be interruptible, I do not mean leave your door open all the time at work, let anyone call you, answer every text, as soon as your phone buzzes, pick it up, as soon as the phone rings, answer it or answer it, uh, as soon as, you know, somebody wants to, to stop and talk, make sure, you know, you st spend all the time in the world to talk, even though you were supposed to be home with groceries 30, 40 minutes ago. No, no, that's not what I mean. In fact, write this down too. Being interruptible doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. Being interruptible doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. Here's what it means. It means you're intentional about seeing the opportunities around you. Because if you're gonna choose to be intentional 
about being interruptible, then that's going to mean that you're going to have to also practice healthy boundaries. You're going to have to also practice wisdom with, is this interruption something I need to take time on? Or is this interruption, can this interruption wait? That's what we can do. When we are intentional about being interruptible, then we can see or hear or, or, or be a part of this interruption and still see if we're able to have time for that. Here's what I mean. There's this thing that we can see. Because if I, if, if I was just telling you these stories of Jesus, okay? And I told you these stories of Jesus being interruptible. And then I put it on you. It's like, look, if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to be a good Christian, here's what you need to do. You need to always make time for people no matter what. And I can make a good case for it. I can make a good case saying people are worth it. Connection is worth it. Love is worth it. And I can make a good case for you. And what that could do is that could create spiritual bypassing. It's a series we did a few months ago. That could create a break when something happens that causes you to break your own boundaries. Here's what I mean. Let's say I'm walking around at the grocery store. Okay, I'll go back to the groceries I just mentioned a bit ago. Let's say I'm walking around at the grocery store and I'm getting groceries for dinner that we're going to make that night. And there's people that see me at the grocery store and they want to have a conversation. Well, if I, I, if I have this guilt mindset of like, okay, no, I always want to be interruptible. I'm always interruptible. Let's sit and chat. Let's sit and talk. And that happens with two or three people and they just want 15 minutes of chatting with me. Or I see somebody and we talk for 15 minutes. If that happens three times, I have talked for 45 minutes. I have made my family wait. We're not able to eat dinner when we wanted to. And it changes the dynamic. And I haven't honored the time that I have already promised, that I've already agreed to, that I've already said yes to with my family because I feel like I need to be guilted into being interruptible. That's where it takes intentionality and wisdom because you can be interrupted you can take your headphones out the grocery store and say, hey, it's so good to see you. How are things going? We should catch up. Give me a call. I'll call you this week. Maybe we can meet for coffee. You can set up that interruption into a future appointment where you can be even more intentional with that conversation. In that conversation, You can be in more, even more intentional with that relationship. That's what it means to be intentionally interruptible. Because there's, I could, there's so many times in the Bible, the stories that we hear where Jesus intentionally walks away from everybody. He walks away to spend time in prayer. He walks away to spend time alone with God. He walks away from a city because he knows he can't do much more. So being interruptible doesn't mean leave yourself open to everything all the time. No, 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 no. It means allowing yourself to see the opportunities in the interruptions. Allowing yourself to be someone who is interruptible. All right, if you're taking notes, there's one more thing I want you to write down. Being interruptible is more than having a positive outlook, but it can certainly start there. See, because in order to have this, uh, this attitude of being interruptible, it almost takes some optimism, right? You're going to have to introduce some optimism or, or even some patience because you need to be patient with yourself and patient with the people around you. Patient with the people around you as they start to interrupt you, knowing that they're not interrupting because they don't think what you're doing is important. Maybe they're interrupting because they have something to say. That takes patience. It takes an optimistic outlook and looking for the best in people. So when they interrupt you and you set, you're setting yourself up to be interruptible, you're going to be optimistic because when somebody interrupts you, you're going to be optimistic about the opportunity. Optimistic about what they might have to say. Optimistic that it might be worth it. So it could be some optimism that is a challenge for you. It could be some patience that is a challenge for you. Now, with each week, as we have these, you know, all, all these messages, our goal on Sunday mornings, our goal for this community is to constantly challenge you to grow, to take steps, to move forward in your faith, to move forward in, in, in what God is doing in your life and the way that your relationships are growing, the way that your life is growing. So what I want to do is I want to challenge you with this. Okay, now each week we ask you to text in the challenge if you're willing to accept it. And when we do that, it's not just so you have something to text. It's so you can be intentional about your life. Now, you don't have to take the challenge and you don't have to text in. And we'll never know either way if you're taking the challenge or not. But if you take the challenge and text in, what that means is we can be in the challenge together. And we can respond to the challenge with you. We can help each other walk through, talk through, and think through these challenges that we're taking and taking these practical steps in our faith. So if you are willing to do it, here's the challenge today, okay? And I wrote this down. I want to tell you the challenge here. Here's the challenge. What part of your life 
can you open up to interruptions? Maybe for you it's work. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's in your parenting. Maybe it's the way you drive. Maybe it's the way you interact with others. The way you talk to people on Zoom. What part of your life, okay? What part of your life can you open up to interruptions? And the second part of that, how can you use patience or positivity? And it could be different things, but patience and positivity are really good basic places to start in your journey to being interruptible, okay? So how can you use patience or positivity to see interruptions as the opportunities that you know they can be? How can you use patience and positivity to see interruptions as the opportunities that you know they can be? Now, here's what I want you to do. If you think you wanna do that this week, if you think you wanna challenge yourself to be interruptible, then I want you to text right now, heart challenge, to 97,000. Text heart challenge to 97,000. Let us remind you what the challenge is. Let us check in with you during the week and be a part of this challenge with you. I want you to do that. I want you to, I want to really challenge you to do that. And if you took that challenge, let us know in the chat. If you took that challenge, let us know in the comments, put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that you took the challenge, what the challenge is, and maybe people that you're friends with on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that uh, th they'll be able to see kind of the journey you're on and you could inspire them to be on the journey with you. Sharing what you're growing in, if something helps you grow, if something help, helps you learn, if something helps you take steps of faith, sharing that with the people in your life, it could do the same for them. So that's the challenge I want to do for you. Because I got to tell you this, eight, nine years ago, when we made ourselves interruptible to Corbin, when we made ourselves become interruptible as parents to so when Corbin, when he is ready to talk, we pause the movie, we pause the show, we stop what we're doing, we take a break at dinner, whatever it is, we stop what we're doing, we stop what we're talking about, and listen. Because when our child was ready to talk, we wanted to be ready to listen. Instead of, we're ready to listen when we want you to talk, it's when you're ready to talk, we want to be interruptible and listen. And I'm, and I'm telling you, what that has done is made way for a deep relationship between Corbin and us. It has made way for trust, knowing that Corbin, knowing that he will be heard when he has something to say to us. And that trust, that relationship, that connection that we have together came from a place of us allowing ourselves to be interruptible. Will you allow yourself to be interruptible? What, think about what your family could look like, what your marriage could look like, what, what your parenting could look like, what your, your job situation could look like, your coworkers' relationships could look like, your friendships could look like, if you allowed yourself to step into what it meant to be interruptible. If you gave yourself permission to be optimistic about interruptions, if you gave yourself permission to be patient with interruptions, <clears throat> excuse me, how could your life change? How could you grow? So uh, this this is uh, uh, this has been such a fun series, such a fun idea to talk through your interruptions. And uh, we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have one more message this coming Sunday. And then we're going to have a new message series starting after that called Found. And you guys, this is going to be juice. Talking about being found by God, being found in you, being found in where you are. Sometimes we hide ourselves. Sometimes we hide from the people that we love. We hide from emotions we don't like. We hide from things that we uh, don't want to confront. And what does it look like to be found? Oh, it's going to be juicy. Now, before we go today, I want to pray for us. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for this journey that you're on, that we're all on together. All right, let's do it. God, we are so, so grateful for, uh, for the opportunity we have to be interruptible, to be uh, a people who are interruptible, looking at the example of your son, Jesus, someone who is interruptible to create connection, to create love, to create uh, a connection with you and with others around him. I pray that you would help us as we uh, explore patience, as we explore positivity, as we step into those over the next week, couple weeks for the rest of our life, uh, that you would allow us to be able to be in a place where we can be interruptible. We love you, and we pray that in your name. Amen. You guys, thanks for joining us uh, today. Um, I wanted to take a moment here at the end of the message to talk to you about what it means when you are generous, when you are generous financially. One of the ways that we, that we connect to God, one of the ways that we uh, deepen our faith 
We, 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 we serve, we, uh, we read uh, the Bible to understand more about uh, the nature of God. We pray, uh, we worship when we sing and when we dig. That's why, we, that's why every week you're going to hear us talking about music and how we can connect to God through music. Every week you're going to hear us reading from the Bible. It's the best way to understand uh, the plan that God had for humanity. It's the best way to understand the nature of who God can be and looking at the trajectory of the Bible and who God is challenging us to be. Every week you're going to hear us pray because praying is one of those ways that we connect to God. And every week you're going to hear us talk about giving because giving is something that stretches our faith and just like reading the bible just like praying just like singing uh just like serving all of those need to be a choice so when you give financially it's got to be a choice i i i believe and i challenge you i believe that giving cannot grow your faith unless you're doing it from a joy a choice i believe that giving cannot grow your faith if you're doing it out of obligation it can help you check a box, but can it grow your faith? I don't think so. So I want to challenge you, if you are choosing to give today, if you want to choose to give financially, you can do so easily. You can go to theheart.church slash give. You can be a part of what God is doing in the city of San Marcos and the surrounding areas. And right now, the connection through Zoom and YouTube. You can be a part of what God is doing through the heart in all of those ways if you choose to give financially. And to be honest, you're already, if you're watching this, you're already part of what God is doing. But when you choose to give financially, you can be a part of furthering uh, what we're doing here. Be a, far, a part of furthering what God is doing through the heart, through this team, through this community. And uh, on, the, on the same note, part of generosity is, is as we uh, challenge you generosity, we challenge ourselves with generosity. So if you go to the heart.church slash updates, um, you can fill out a form there. You or somebody that you know, any assistance that is needed, uh, we want to help with uh, uh, utilities, groceries, whatever it is. We want to help the people in our community and be a resource for people. So um, before we go today, I want to pray today for the offering. Pray what God is doing in your life, in, uh, in our lives, in the lives of this community, this city, uh, this state, this country. So let's do it. God, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to be in this together. And thank you that you showed us what generosity was, that you uh, have the spirit of what generosity really is. And I pray that we could have that same spirit, that same spirit of generosity uh, that you have already put it in us and that we activate it. We activate that generosity from a place of choice, not a place of obligation. So we love you and we pray that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your week and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon.